Hello and welcome to MD Model Works in association with Alclad 2. My name's Mark Davey. Um, I'm trying to get in front of the camera more. This is going to be a review video. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go back over a review that I did about a month ago, which was the Zvesta Hercules. Now, I had a troll on my Facebook page, oh not my Facebook page, my YouTube page, who said, what's the point of inbox reviews? You know, you don't build them, there's no point in them. So what I'm gonna do now, when I do a review and I build the kit, I'm gonna have a follow up and explain exactly what happened. So this is the Zvesta 172 Hercules. I think it's the H version. Um, this is in the area of colors. This was in Desert Storm, this version. I'm gonna make it a little bit mucky, but as the kit itself, absolutely superb. Loved every minute of it. The only problem I had was the decals. The large wing decals were a complete pain in the butt. They had such large carrier film, but it worked and it went together like a dream apart from that. The decals have all gone lay down flat, but I did respray the walkways. But there you go, that's life, that's what happens. So be very careful you do the deckling. Now, she's quite a large kit, she's very glossy, so you can see. She's ready to have her panel lines put on or a panel line wash put on there, which will be done hopefully at some point tomorrow. But anyway, that's enough of that. It is a good kit, it went together beautifully. Highly, highly recommend it. Fantastic looking kit. And it grow. It, you can see it's big and it's lovely. It's a good chunk. But today, we're gonna be reviewing, put that out of the way. That's a tip for anybody who builds aircraft and they want them sitting. They can scratch on the floor, but this little bit of sponge cut out works perfectly. Right put that to one side for a minute it's kit review time so this we're going to do a review on airfixers I think it's a month old now they're Buccaneer S2 S2B now I got this to go along with the Hercules um, I would like to do this in uh, desert pink but I need to find the decals and what have you for it, but that's why we're going to. But anyway, we're going to do a full inbox review, see what it looks like. I haven't opened the box, that's still sealed. I haven't got a clue, I've not watched any reviews on the kit. Although Mick Burr did do a fantastic build of the S1, which is the Navy version, came out absolutely gorgeous. Have a look on the old Clad 2 Facebook page, it's there. And here comes Dudley. Uh, but yeah, so we'll bring the camera down, we'll have a look at the plastic, see what we got, and um, yeah, this is going to be built very shortly, so yeah, let's bring it down and go from there. Here we are, we've got Airfix's new rendition of their Blackburn Buccaneer S2B. Nice big box, um, I like it when they come in a decent sized box, it means there's plenty of uh, parts in there. But anyway, your kit number is A06022. It comes in two colour configurations. We've got your wrap round um, ocean grey and your RAF dark green or a grey. Now, as I said, I would like to do it in desert pink. I know they were used in Desert Storm, as was the Herc. I'll just show you. So, it would be nice to have this in the Desert Pink, although the Herc never was, which is a damn shame, because that would have looked marvellous in the Desert Pink. But there you go. Anyway, so, on the box. Excuse me, beautiful picture of uh, the S2B. Probably gone through the Mac loop, looking at that, or made to look like it's gone through the Mac loop. 
fantastic artwork. Well, you got the the heat rendition behind it. Looks marvellous. Anyway, around the box you've got the standard warnings that you get all the time from Airfix. Nothing much on the ends. Then you've got your two colour configurations here, which is number 208 Squadron, Royal Air Force Lossiemouth, Moray, Scotland, June 1990. Which the, this aircraft is at the Ulster Aviation Society, been preserved by those in Northern Ireland. Well done. And number 12 Squadron, which was the grey. I don't like it in grey, but anyway, that's the way it is. Which was 1993, so it's post Desert Storm, I believe. And that was Scotland again, uh, Lossy Mouth, Scotland again in September 93. Nothing on the bottom. As you can see, we're still sealed. So we'll open her up. And see what we've got in the box. Okay. Right. So one bag is well there's two bags, we've got the clear is in a separate bag. Airfixes way, we've got used to it now. We all moan about it, but hey ho. Empty box, that can go on the side. We've got our instructions, our decals, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Instructions in a massive, oh, we've got stencil call out. Um, let me just take you out a little bit. Not go too far, that's it. Uh, we masses of stencils as there are on modern jets. Well, this isn't modern anymore, but at the time, doesn't look too bad compared to the Phantom. So we're all right with that. I mean, there's two sets. They're both for IMB stencils, so presumably they were different, which is fair enough. You know. So that's nice. Then you've got your colour callouts, obviously in Humbrol. But they come as matte camouflage grey, which is barley grey, let's be honest, BS 626. Uh, standard colours, even got satin US grey on there, which will be this part here. And then the green, it seems funny that one colon is painted, obviously came from another aircraft, or was never painted afterwards. So the main camouflage, as I said, is barley grey, satin medium grey, on it. There's, there's a few there. So I could do this one in desert pink because it says here research notes like many buccaneers that returned from Operation Granby in 1991 XX885 flew for a while in its desert pink finish with nose art and missions markings. When the ex Granby aircraft were eventually repainted, was the only Buccaneer to retain its mission markings and Sky Pirates artwork. When it was photographed in 1993, it was carrying a replacement intake from a camouflaged aircraft. Ah, scrap views are included for how the aircraft appeared in the summer of 93. Okay, right, so this is the one we're going to be doing. I didn't know that I could do this. I'm very, very pleased. So this will be in Desert Storm or Granby Markins in the Desert Pink, which I absolutely love. So that's fantastic news for me. Well chuffed with that one. Okay, so we have a very, very tightly folded instruction manual giving us some more information about the Buccaneer, the Rolls-Royce Spy engines and what have you. Maximum speed 667 miles per hour. Uh, wingspan of 44 feet, length of 63 feet. Fabulous. Okay. So it gives us a little bit of info. Usual assembly instructions, which most people nowadays block over. We've read them once when we were young and we don't touch them again, but there you go. They have to be there by law, which is still a nice touch, and the icon instructions as you go through. 
Okay, so we're straining the kit, we're straining the seats. Now, I have got a set of Eddard RAF late version seat belts, which are designed for, not designed for this kit, but they will make other kits as well. They'll go in Jags and Harriers and what have you as well, which is fantastic. There's three in a kit. I think about six pounds. Fabulous little thing. Saves a lot of hassle. But anyway, strain the kit. Seats go together. Then the uh, wheel work, the front wheel bay going on the bottom of the cockpit section. You've got the rear, excuse me, bulkhead going in. The seats going down. Instrument panels going on and then being sandwiched in the nose. Again, very, very nice. So we've got front instrument panel being done with the head up display. Looking fantastic. Uh, decal for the instrument panel, 172. Fair enough. I mean, there was a time that I would put Eddard instrument panels into everything that I did, but you don't see them. So now I'm going to stick to the decals if they come in 172. 148 is a bit different, you can see more in the cockpit. But anyway, it, slide, it fits in, the uh, cockpit fits into the nose section with the front combing going on. And then we come to the wings. Now if you, this will also, the wings can be folded on both the Navy and the RAF versions. So fair enough, you know, it's all there. You have to cut them off. Don't forget to open your holes for whatever you're going to put on there. Then we go into the uh, compressor fans at the rear. Sorry, at the front. The compressor, then the exhaust fans are a little bit further down. We've got little bits going inside, parts for the wheel wells by the looks of it, sliding in and making the, so the body quite solid. The exhaust tubings, again, full length, which is really, really nice. And we've got, they go down, again, forming up the um, wheel wells, the rear wheel wells. The rear of the engine is going on, which would be the exhaust blades. Some more small parts going together for the exhausts, with the exhaust blades going there. Uh, opening up holes, ready for bits and pieces to go, then you sandwich the exhaust system down into the fuselage body again parts here saying about making how to uh, put your your wings in the um, upright position or the folded position for storage strengthening parts going in if you're going to have the wings out straight I think that's a good idea that will work well Opening up a few more holes, just basically looking around, again, as I said, sandwiched down, outer wings going off, these were replaced at some point, you have to be careful on the version you build, these uh, were removed to be able to see into the area a bit more easier on later aircraft. The tail section going on, this is looking like a very modular kit. Again, I've got no issues with that, providing it all lines up lovely. So that's all going down. You've got the rear going onto the fuselage. You've got your exhaust, more parts of the exhaust going together. This is quite detailed on the rear, which is really, really nice because the first, I read the original Blackburn, uh, the original Buccaneer mold wasn't that brilliant from Airfix, but then it is old, like we all are. We all get rough with age, including me. So the exhaust going on, nose joining the fuselage, the intakes going on. We've got the lovely tail at the rear. I do like a T tail. That looks really nice. You've got your radar going on the top there. Depending on which one you're going to use, obviously. I think there's more than one involved in the kit. The rudder going on. You've got an all-in-one tail hook by the looks of it, which obviously you could detail paint, put a wash on, it's going to look superb. You can have the air brake open or closed. Again, in storage on a ship, it would have been opened to make it less, less length, less long. No, making it slightly shorter 
again for storage so that's good little bumps going on again something to do with the air brake as you can see it going in or you could just put the standard tail on the end which I will do right oh in the nose make sure you put at least 15 uh, grams of weight so I would double that put an ounce in uh, 28 grams just to make sure it sits nice and firm on the front you have a rotary bomb bay on a buccaneer so either that goes on or that goes off your choice I don't know how detailed the bomb bay is I haven't looked at the plastic so I don't know um, that sort of be either on or off your choice more detail work going in to the Bombay. Uh, your flaps going in, so they could probably be movable. Not movable, but plate. You know, you can place them in the position you want to place them as a, as a, you know, as as a rundown model. Some pipe work going into the wheel bays. The uh, recognition lights on the on the bottom. You've got your lumps and bumps, your pitot tubes, your aerials that also go on the bottom. Your hard points, uh, another pitot tube of description. Looks like you've got clear edges to go on, which is a bit of a pain. But if that is clear, it looks like it's clear. That we can sort with a bit of masking, which is my favourite job anyway. Actuators for the... Uh, not the rudders, the ailerons, and so on. Then we start on the undercarriage. Now the undercarriage won't be heavily detailed because it wasn't on the actual aircraft, it was just a lump. So there you go. We'll see if we've got run flat wheels on there, which would be nice. All the, the rear undercarriage going on with the rear undercarriage doors going down. Obviously the callouts are all in one nine, uh, sorry, are all in Humbrol. Other little boats and bumps going on. This is for the rear of the uh, arrestor hook again. Very detailed in here by the looks of it. Again, without the plastic, I don't know. We've got a gentleman to sit in there with his funny face as usual. Um, two of them can go in. We've got our clear parts going down. We've got our in-flight refueling probe, which will be in a position to be seen constantly. Again, that's a very nice piece. Then we have our, looks like three-part external fuel tanks. General side monitors, fire streaks, whatever they are. I, I'm not really up to date with uh, weapons. It's something I've never really been interested in, but I am getting there now. GBUs, um, flare pods going on there. Again, if I've got the terminator, the the name's wrong. I do apologise, but I presume that's some sort of a radar come flare pod for the GBUs. Don't they are GBUs definitely. And going down, all going onto the hard point, and then at the end, it gives you the wings up. And where the hard points should be going again so that's nice okay we'll go straight into the decals I'll bring it in sorry I'll bring it in a little bit uh, let's uh, let that focus in I turn the auto focus in so it doesn't make too much noise we should be all right there anyway so we've got some nice decals. I know these are printed by Cartograph, so they should be good. Although these do look a bit thick. And we've got a mark on that one, which it should be. Absolutely fine. Um, they do look quite nice. Sky Pirates, happy with that. Your mark guns, so we can use this, as I said, I'm really chuffed to be honest. Be able to do this in desert pink. Uh, it's going to look fantastic. So we've got all the stencils. Obviously, that's too small to read. They're tiny. Very basic instrument panels, but all the instrument 
areas I cater for. Now we're in our big bag of goodies. Let's see what we got. I try to do these videos without any jump cuts, but sometimes you have no choice. I'm going to go straight into our clear parts. Put that there. Okay, so we have our clear parts, which have been a lot better from all the companies just lately. They seem to have got this sus. They're all raised, so it's nice and easy to to uh, mask up with. I just use frog tape, go it over. Then sometimes frog tape can leave a little bit of uh, stickiness behind on the model, but all I do is take that off with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Now looking at this, our wing edges certainly are all in one. Fine, but be careful of those, they will be quite brittle. The glazing itself is clear, there's no wibbly wobbly, which is nice. And between the, the pilot and the nav, or the Rio, or whatever you'd like to call him, lovely and clear, very hard to mould something like that, that clear, but looks really, really nice. So, happy with that. And then we got straight into our. Gotta keep that just about there. Straight into our main parts, really. So we've got the top half, the bottom half of the fuselage, the wings, the T tail, and the tail itself with the intakes. Now I can see a little bit of flash on here, but hey, it's a little bit of flash. What are we moaning about? This kit isn't that expensive. I think about £25 for the kit. So absolutely superb. Okay, we've got wheels there. They are, yeah, have got a flat spot, which is nice to see. The detail on this is exquisite. Even the Bombay looks really, really nice. It's looking good everywhere. No sink marks that I can actually see. And there's raised as well as engraved panel lines. Again, fabulous. Well done, Airfix. So, nothing wrong with that. And on the inside, everything is put, all the ejector pin marks are out of the way. Most companies seem to have got this sus now, which we've been asking for for years to get this right. But they are doing a really nice job. Panel lines aren't too thick. So that is nice. Then what we got here. So we've got our intake trunking, and again, Airfix have done it. We've got no, let me get you up there, we've got no um, ejector pin marks inside the trunking. Now, Airfix have got to be commended for this, because that's a pain in the butt to get rid of those. But great, we've got the uh, compressor fans looking absolutely superb. Different parts, the in, under wings, or the under wings, under the wings under the thing, I look good. Slightly raised ejection pin marks, make sure you rub them down. Just to make sure the fit is nice. Undercarriage, as I said, it's boring. But it will be, I'm afraid. Because that's what it was like. It was very, how can I put it, bland, let's say. But does its job extremely well. The cockpit, as you can see, is basic. That will liven up with the decals, which is fair enough in this scale. There's a little bit of detailing inside the front wheel well. Not a great deal. But it's small, so you probably wouldn't notice it. Then we cut the next sprue. More compressor blades, so perhaps... No, nope, that's a different part. This is the... Uh, Exhaust blades, um, looking really good. Some fantastic detail and on the air brakes on the inside if you want to have those open. These are your uh, stays for either open or closed. We've got the rear of the fuselage as well here. 
two pieces perfect you've got the nose which again is very nice and there is some riveting on there not much but there is some it's going to take a wash absolutely gorgeous the plastic is mm, typical airfix but it will go together very very well with Tamara extra thin glue which most of us use there's a little bit of uh, detailing on the inside of the cockpit you'll never see this not through the cockpit but we know it's there so there you go a smaller parts brew we've got our detail work again riveting on the tail looking or the rudder looking really nice the seats don't look too bad they have got built-in seat belts but I'll be removing those and putting our red hard ones in nice detail on the front combing here Pitot tube looks good there's no ejector pin marks in the way anywhere the seats don't look too bad again in 172 if you're not having a pilot in there it's worth getting a couple of resin seats to, to just add a little bit of interest but I won't be bothering I like to build my stuff out of the box nowadays I enjoy that just as much other lumps and bumps everything looking really well formed some nice detail on the bulkhead for the cockpit very nicely moulded uh, refueling probe so that's great final sprue I'm coming in and we've got another tail so what show that other one was seems to be multiple tails on this so whether this is one this is a sprue that was hangover from the S1 I didn't do a review on the S1 um, like I said Mick Burr built it I know he did a nice model of it I never really I, I said I didn't do a review on it so I can't remember what it was like missiles are what they are they're basic but they'll do the job for this scale again ECM pods looking really nice as I said there's a little bit of flash here and there but this is airfix and I'm not going to moan about it I would say these are the old, this is an older sprue I don't quote me on it but I would say this is an older sprue and the flash is now starting to come through but there you go right the Bombay has absolutely no detail but then it doesn't have any weight but this can either be in or out your choice to show off the bombs that are inside the body so yeah again no ejector pin marks with any issues whatsoever looking really really good okay right so So that was the reasonably new Airfix 172 Blackburn Buccaneer S2B. On the face of it, it looks great. And as I said, I will build this. And in a later review, at some point, I will bring it up. And we'll bring it on the camera again. And we'll see how it comes out. Hopefully, it'll come out as well as the Herc have. And I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to do this in Desert Pink. I'm well chuffed with that. Okay, just a quick thank you to Robert Alclad for supplying the kit. Obviously everything we paint in Alclad to Millspec paints, including the Desert, Desert Pink, which we helped develop. Fantastic. Well done, Airfix. You keep them coming. Can't wait. Right, thanks for watching. And don't forget the live Q&A, Alclad 2 Q&A is now on a Wednesday evening on YouTube, 7 till 8. Normally, if there's any problems, it'll be 8 till 9. So, here we go. Anyway, thanks for watching. Speak to you all soon.